preservation over a restoration. Unreal, doesn't it? Absolutely. That is history in itself, like that preservation layer I was talking about. Like, really, it's... Mike Wolf on American Pickers would be going bloody nuts on that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, welcome to a new Dave's Classic Garage Tours video. And today, it's the first of my videos from Creative Customs in Dramana, down on the Mornington Peninsula, south of Melbourne. Bit of a mixed bag, this one, featuring some true Aussie icons from both on the road and track. Final year apprentice, John took me first around the restoration side of the business before handing me over to company paint and panel guru, Dale. And we'll also get a special guest appearance from business owner, Alan. We're so innovative and so are the Kiwis. Remember, all the other cars you see in the background from overseas will be appearing in a series of videos over on the Dave's Classic Garage Tours V2 channel. So, so make sure you don't uh, miss out and head over there oh, yeah, and subscribe, as well as here on the Aussie Only Original Channel. All free and welcoming of your comments and suggestions below. So, without further ado, let's go and have a look. Right, finally we get to an Australian road car. <laughs> exactly, an Australian. So, this is, um, so what, what series is this? An X so, this is an XP. XP. Yep. Right. A lot of them have the rollover front end, but it's um, the XP kind of had that with that one uh, model to have that pointy front end. Okay. Compared to all the XMs and yeah, yeah, all the other ones. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this was a what, barn find or something, or yeah, this is sat for the owner has owned it for gosh, I think he said 25 years, and it's just sat. It's a bit of a labour of love. It, um, yeah, he's had it for a long time and. This is kind of a good car to show, like we might have cars that come in for a full blown, the full Monty restoration and we'll do everything. Yeah. Or this is escalators as a lot of projects do, but this originally came in to just get it on the road, right. tidy it up okay. and uh, make it a good cruiser. So okay. sometimes like, you know, we I will- leave it in original condition. I'll leave it in original condition. So we, um, a lot of the time, you know, we'll, we can, suit any budget really if you yeah. want to go the full monty and have a show car um like the aston martin we did happy to do that but we're with this car it originally started as come in tidy up the mechanical so i've done um all the front end suspension ball joints brakes bushings tie rod ends you name it underneath the car and same as the motor pulled it out and gave it a real nice freshen up so nothing crazy not a full rebuild just gaskets welsh plugs seals make sure a car be rebuild. Certainly tidied it up and yeah. put a bit of paint on there, hey? Yeah, it's definitely come up all right. Like as I was mentioning earlier, like nothing over the top because that was in the customer's budget yeah. and the customer's request, but just a really good going through to make sure it is a healthy motor yeah. and to make sure it is gonna last for a few more years and then obviously preventative maintenance. So real nice tidy up and then of course, cause you're gonna put it back in a nice lick of paint just to give yeah, it a, yeah, you know, give it a bit of color, a bit of pop. Yeah. In recent light, it's actually, Escalated as one would, you know, when they're when they're sentimentally attached to a car. Right. Um, the customer has decided to um, for us to strip it and do a paint job oh, and wow. interior. So nothing, again, not a show Ooh. car, but just a real nice cruiser, which yeah. we can do, because at the end of the day, it's all in you know what customers want to do in their budget. So yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, Falcon wise, more. You know, I see a lot of uh, XRs onwards and, yep. and whatever, but parts-wise for this, is it reasonably good? So yeah, easy? it's very simple. A lot of parts you can get at Repco. Yeah, uh, super right. cheap, auto barn, your local auto, part, yeah, yeah, auto yeah. parts store. But Rare Spares, who sure. in the Holden Ford community, they're well known, Rare yeah. Spares and Resto Country, you just get everything from them. Yeah. Um, pretty much everything I needed to do the um, front end suspension, brake lines, um, wheel cylinders, uh, ball joints, everything, uh, bushes, that was all from Rare Spares. Yeah, right. And we just got two big boxes come in and it was everything we needed pretty much. So with these cars, it's, it couldn't be easier. Yeah, yeah. It's unreal. Cool. When it gets dipped and everything, yeah. you well, know what you're going to find then. I mean, exactly, uh, that's the thing. So this one's not going so to go... go seriously bad. Exactly. There's, I guess you can kind of see it as three different levels of restoration. So this yeah. one's not going to get completely dipped. Um, and because we've done the suspension and all the bushings, I think he wants, we're going to bare metal it, um, probably by hand, that's send the doors and hang on panels to be dipped. Right. But bare metal the body by hand and really just have a good look over the car, strip the interior, yeah. but kind of keep it as a running driving car, bare metal it, strip it and paint it. So 
a lot of the time we do do a lot of acid dipping, full Monty restorations, yeah. but you know, you've got customers out there who don't, you know, they don't want to go the full Monty. They love yeah. their car. They just want it to be a tidy cruiser. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if you're stripping a car by hand, uh, yep. I mean, what's the difference in price between do you doing it by hand or sending it off? So in this case, where I guess they're saving a lot of labor um, pulling all the suspension and hard lines and electrical out because the electrical in this car is really good and the underbody is really good in this car. So if you send it a car to be dipped, it needs to be completely stripped, Absolutely. not even a plastic tr um, clip. So you've got to imagine there could be a, a few more weeks added to that labor right. toll. And, and you know, by the time okay. you get every clip, every wire off, and sometimes a lot of people, that's not... You know, they just want something tidy. They sure. just want it, you know, to be stripped, but not completely stripped. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah. and bare metal in it by hand, you'd usually go, you know, you'd paint strip it and then um, get the orbital sander, sand right. it down to bare metal. So um, I was thinking do like that for the next six weeks. Yeah, exa no, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, even... There are machines to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, for this car, the interior is going to be painted and get a nice interior, but things like maybe the boot might stay how it is or the underbody might stay how it is. Yeah. So you yeah. need... Um, and would you go, yeah. you know, like the, uh, X, the GT community would go for that, you know, back to factory look yep. and, and whatever. Would that, uh, you know, want the overspray and the orange peel and whatever? Well, that's the thing. It depends, you know, that's the, that's the begging question in the car community. Like what is really, you know, like a concourse back to original car because... Um, you know, you, I've looked at a lot of Survivor cars, cars that are original paint, uh, original trim, and a lot of the brake lines and the paint jobs and the this and that, like cars that have been, have sat for 50 years. They haven't been touched by mechanics, things haven't been changed. And you'd be surprised how, um, you know, cars get built to be exactly like factory and concourse, but they were never really built that great. From factory, oh. the brake lines are all crooked and yeah. gross, and the paint had a lot of orange peel in it and yeah. overspray. So technically, well, guys, I mean, those guys talk about with the paints nowadays. It's a harder finish to achieve. Yeah. Than, you know, the, than the gloss. Exactly. You get from a show car. Definitely, definitely, it's a lot harder. So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the question is, what is really an original car yeah. these days? Yeah. I mean, that's all sort of that faded there, isn't it? Sun fade and yep. whatever that be. They'd be replaced, were they? Or? Definitely, definitely. Right. Ori originally, and because. That's all available. Yeah, originally because we were going to go that patina kind of right. build because. There's a big, there's a big market Absolutely. in the car community for the patina kind of rat rod, if you will. Yeah. A lot of people would keep that, yeah. but considering he's kind of going, you know what? I've had this car for a long time. It deserves it. I'm going to go yeah. the full Monty. Um, yeah. Things like that will get replaced. Yeah. Rubbers and everything. Yeah, yeah, cool. Alrighty. Okay, so this one's pretty special. Kind of come and yes. saw. Um, Alan, he was keen to tell yes. us all about this one. This one is, as far as jobs and restorations go, this is probably almost as far as you could go. So this car is a known as an Oz car. Yes. So it's an Australian built race car and it replicates the um, Maseratis, the 50s Maseratis race car. <laughs> body style but it was built in Australia did a lot of um, racing like Phillip Island and such but customer brought it to us because he was just infatuated with the history behind it because yeah. even though it's a I guess a kit car it's still it had a lot of history in the Aussie scene yeah but was it just one of them no there's multiple I oh, think there's multiple okay. all a little bit different um, yeah. and yeah they're all fiberglass body but this one uh, as you can imagine with any hand-built race car it was rough but when it came in the actual exoskeleton the chassis the frame it was rough yeah. as you can imagine being built just for you know a few races back in the day there's just everything was it was there but it was rough sure so we've gone and done the full works pretty much like stripped the frame back and re-welded everything made up new tubing um, this aluminium flooring and inner has been completely handmade in-house oh, wow. um, one awesome. of our fabricators is unbelievably talented. Yeah. He shaped everything by hand and it's all oh, the aircraft beautiful. rivets to yeah. make it and wow. trying to, yeah, so it's been a labor of love. Yeah, but pretty much everything, everything has yeah. been either re-welded or reimagined, re yeah. remade. 
So how many hours has gone into this, would you imagine? So, or how long has it been in the I shop? Did, a long time. A, long oh, time. a couple of years, it's been yeah. in the shop. Yeah. And as any project, you might spend a lot of time on it, then a, a little bit of time off. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even the fuel tank, trying to just keep, like, to the original Maseratis, sure. keep that, um, I guess, history about it. Like, the yeah. fuel tank around, they have the spare tyre in the back. And, uh, yeah, so, as you can all see, it's got no body. Yeah. Um, and later on in the video, we'll, uh, once we get into the paint section, you'll see the body next door. It's about to yeah, get some paint and then we're going to, now that we've done all the fabricating and welding, everything's going to come back apart. The um, chassis and frame will be sandblasted and painted and then all back together. Cool, cool. So when's he, um, how long left on this do you reckon? Yeah. It all depends. It could be, you know, depend we usually have maybe one, two, people at a time on this so uh -huh. you know you could see it back on the road in six months you could yeah. see it in eight months a year um they offer jaguar do you reckon those wheels or yeah they could be off a jaguar and what's the engine there so these are both um no, 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 oh this, this engine so it's a just a little four cylinder oh, right. um okay you can see it's even got yeah the Oscar, the yeah, Oscar the rocker that. cover yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. the history of what it's been yeah. pieced together with is unknown right but okay. yeah just a little four cylinder with some twin Weber's on it, yeah, yeah. I think they might possibly the IDAs, the IDFs. They are, oh. uh, yeah, just g give it some life. That's for yeah. sure. It's um, but everything like everything in here, the radiator, all the bottles here have been fa uh, made in house by a fabricator, oh, Will. Wow. Really he, um, cool. Will and Mark. They uh, both have been going to town Easy on this. Work, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, even that. Yeah, m pretty much every bit of that radiator is custom handmade yeah. in house. Nice and, one. Okay. Cool. Now this is wonderful, wonderful to see. These are the tools we want to see in these. Uh, we got it all, huh? We right do. Now. We Talk do. Everything in house, eh? We do. Um, we do have a lot of new stuff, that's for sure. But yeah. where I think um, where this industry can flourish, we have a lot of old school stuff. Yeah. Um, I guess it's fitting to, you know, our our business, but. Yeah, so we've got the, this is everything fabrication pretty much. So we've got the oh, lathe, yeah. um, drill press, uh, belt sander, and then everything under the sun you can imagine in power tools and welders and every little bit yeah. for a press or whatever. But I mean, a lot of shops, a lot of shops can uh, spend tens of thousands of dollars getting all the new well, stuff. This thing, you know, this is, most of these things here would be absolute alien to most yeah. kids coming out of 100%. a... Uh, of an apprenticeship nowadays, 100%. Though, wouldn't it? They wouldn't even know. Well, that's the thing. We've got a lot of stuff here that's either been handmade yeah. or tools that have been around for 30, yeah. 40, 50 years. And even our fabricator, uh, one of our fabricators, Mark, he is, um, everything he does is pretty old school. Yeah. A lot of by hand, beading by hand. And sure, there's a lot of tools that can, you know, bend, bend and bend whack, and but yeah, um, nothing can beat really yeah. all the old school. All wow. the old school stuff, all the presses well, and... Tell us about this little number. So this is um, another, this is the customer who owns the Oscar. Right. And he bought this kind of just, I, I believe out of um, just complete curiosity. Yeah. So this thing was a, uh, I guess a buggy dirt race car. That's it. And <laughs> it... Um, There's a um, particular name for these things. Um, yeah, the... Um, Oh, oh I couldn't remember. Right, put it in the comments, anybody uh, yeah. watching. Um, anybody has an idea? Yeah, yeah. God, I hope he doesn't paint that. That looks so cool. It would be cool end. to clear coat it and keep that yeah. original. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do because there's so much history in it. Absolutely. Things like this, you start, the more you take away, the yeah. really, you could just build a new one yeah. if you really want something like yeah. that. But the history is what make it, makes it so the, yeah, our um, fabricators have just been yeah. trying to, Put some new sheet metal, metal in where needed, needed, but just yeah, keep, yeah. again, on that patina um, yeah. oh, preservation that, over a restoration. That back end looks fantastic. Unreal, doesn't it? Absolutely it, uh, fantastic. That is history in itself, like that preservation like I was talking about. Like, really, it's... Mike Wolf on American Pickers would be going bloody nuts on that. Yep. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the originality, the numbers. That's why I think myself, like, I've had a couple... You know, going back to my Volkswagen obsession, I had a couple patina VWs because 
there's something about it. They just tell a story. Every ding, every mark, every, you know, yeah. they tell a story where they've been in their life. And isn't that why we love cars so much? It yeah. makes us feel young again or it makes us remember Absolutely. what it was like. Absolutely. And it, Went to Phillip Island trying to get some interest to see, you know, to obviously restore these things. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had Alan come to tell us what it was all about. That huh? Alan, come on, just give, just give us a lowdown on this. Come on, okay. you, you do this one. What, right. Alan, what, this is business what, owner Alan. What, what year is it? What year is it? It was post-war. You're telling me? Yeah, it is. It is post-war. So this is the little now, midget. Apparently, it's called a midget. Midget. I was going to get uh, John to tell us because Alan's already mentioned it, but yeah. Alan's so, yeah, here so, to tell us what it's all so about. So this is a, this is a little midget, and and it's this was built up with bits and pieces out of a scrapyard, which was really common after the war. In fact, Australians are really big for it. Full stop of, of modelling things up out of bits and pieces, yep. and we're we're so innovative, and so are the Kiwis. Right. And that's what this was. It's called. It's a midget. It was a class. It was a budget class after the war. Actually, Alan, midget car racing in Australia can trace its roots back to 1934, when its first official event was staged at Melbourne's Olympic Park. Of course, just like many car scenes, midgets had originated in Southern California. And it was thanks to visiting Australian Bill well, Allen, who witnessed an event there, then returned home with a midget car himself, that the series took off down under. Racing midgets spread with events in Sydney, Newcastle and Adelaide, then Brisbane, following soon after, making the series and its drivers some of the most popular sports attractions of the late 1930s. War temporarily ended racing, but it took off again with gusto once fighting ended in 1945. Midgets finally reached the west coast of Australia on New Year's Eve 1946 at the Claremont Showground. Within a few years, and by this point widely known as speed cars, as with most motorsports, infighting for control saw fragmented series appear, especially in New South Wales. But by the end of the 1950s, an amalgamation of the warring parties brought about a midget racing salvation and the grandstands at venues like the Sydney Showground would be packed to the rafters each Saturday night throughout the 1960s. Lean times hit the series in the 1980s and the introduction of wings split the sport down the middle. There is your top three, only separated by about five car lengths between the three of them. But it seems today speed cars have a healthy following and can be found broadcast live online throughout the season on the Clay Purview app. And this had a BSA motor in it with a BSA gearbox. Yeah. It's got a Triumph Herald rear hubs on it. Yeah. It Triumph run. Herald, I mean, yeah, Herald I think so. Triumph Herald, but that wouldn't be that that's, wouldn't be that early, right? So yeah, this so is this has been, been this has been yeah, this has been addition and it's been obviously modified all the time. Yeah, it's got a uh, Ford Model T steering column. Model T, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's and it's idea. got a um, Austin Seven front end. Yeah, tiny yeah, little yeah. thing. You see it down the ground there behind you. Look on the ground over there. Oh right, yeah, look, um, look, look how narrow the track is. That's been shortened. That's the way they were. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's got all these odd bits and pieces, levers and gate hinges did, and you know. Didn't Rocky it. have one of these? Rocky? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He had something very similar, didn't he? But I think well, it was a bigger no, game. No, he had an Austin 7, didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he went around yeah. the paddock in Austin 7. That's right. Yeah. But I so, do recall reading about these uh, post-war, yeah. knocked up. See, even, look at these. Mate, that's the best. These are headlight covers. Oh, yeah. Headlight rims. <laughs> you don't so, know what, from what, no? Oh, would have, no, 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 that's the beauty about it. You don't know. It's, but the, we're going to keep this back section original because this is the original mate. I mean, back that section. Is, that's the most beautiful thing yeah. about it, isn't it? I yeah, mean, it is. Oh, totally. Your man's. Uh, oh. Well, these, uh, these were original, but this was so beaten up yeah, yeah, yeah. and so mangled. I don't want to downbeat that, that, his, uh, the great yeah. work that your man's done. But yeah. It's, that, it, this, is, this, is pre, this, is, this is done, period. Yeah. yeah. Built as per period. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> that's how that's they work. Great. No, no, no. And the, and the awesome. hubcap on the front, see the hubcap? That's, yeah, nice touch. No. That's awesome. Yeah, even no, that, that's to, uh, part of the hubcap too. We can see see pictures of the original car. Oh, see, right, that, that's yeah, the original yeah. car there. Ah, cool, cool. You can see it's got a different front nudge bar yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, it's then got painted blue at one stage. Yeah. And then it didn't have any nudge bar. So it sits, yeah. yeah. I, awesome. I reckon it would have been touch, touch racing. Great stuff. Right, okay, this is the Oz car that we uh, saw with John the other side. 
And uh, yeah, this is, uh, well, an Oscar based on a 1950s Maserati. It is a 1956 Maserati. There was a company in Melbourne in the 50s that produced what they call an Oscar. They made seven in total. Uh, different configurations. Some had opening and closing doors. Some had opening and closing boot lids. Some were a one-piece body. This one was actually, uh, this one was based on a, a Triumph chassis and body. So yeah, a, a original Triumph, a new Triumph at the time was bought. The body was taken off, and what this year body was put on. Sorry? 19, uh, this would be mid fifties. Fifties, right? Yeah, late fifties oh, okay. actually. Sorry, late fifties. Right, yeah, okay. Triumph TR3. TR3. Yeah. Right. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, underneath this skin is a Triumph TR3. Okay. And they put this body over the top of it. Wow. So oh, yeah, it's a it's an Oz car. So there were two of them with Holden Grey motors running around at the Phillip Island Classic in March. So they're still active oh, wow, and still yeah. out there. Cool. Yeah. And this one here, uh, we. We did a we do uh, an Aston Martin uh, DB2 Mark III. In uh, we took it to Motor Classic in 2019, and we were lucky enough we walked away with best in show. Oh wow! So yeah, cool. so that was that was a huge honour, a huge privilege, yeah. and yeah, massive event. That's the uh, last one, wasn't it? But, uh, it was. Oh no, there's been one since. Right. Okay. One since, but the same owner of the Aston Martin has commissioned us to build this one for him. So this awesome. is project probably five or six that we've done for that owner. Yeah. That's what I say, we get to do repeat jobs and, and yeah. you know for the same customers and clients and they become friends and you build up such a rapport with these people and you just love to do the next project and, and see what their dreams are and yeah, fill their garages for them. And sure. it, yeah, it's a massive honor, it's fantastic. But yeah. this has been a real challenge this because it has been a race car, it has been a road going car. It's been on the road consistently since then or it's been active since then. So it had a little bit of carnage and some body damage and whatever, being that it is a fiberglass car. So again, we had to restore that. Um, and they were never really, I suppose the quality of them being the era potentially may have been questionable in the day and, and even techniques and materials, whatever the case. So it was a real challenge to sort of bring it up to standard and get it as square as we can now and restore it, being that it is original, you know, and it's yeah, yeah, yeah. well and truly showing the ages, uh, the signs of age. Sure. But, but then we have to make things like this that it never actually came with. So in-house, we've got to sort of come up with something that has a headrest and give it that sort of sporty look. The windscreen, the same, was made in-house. There's a lot of pieces that were done sort of within house just to sort of get a bit of an idea of what the owner was hoping yeah. for and wanting. So that's um, what... Non original, that would have been on the Maserati. No, 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 no that was just, yeah, then? no. We sort of got a, a bit of an idea, look at, say, Ferraris and Maseratis, and of the day, oh, right, okay. what they may have had, the characteristics. Yeah. And so what we need to do, hey, because we had a fuel it tank. Looks to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does, <laughs> exactly. And we've got a fuel tank underneath it, so what we oh, need to yeah. do is make something oh, that's wow. a headrest, yeah, yeah. and also the fuel tank. So we sort of hide where the fuel filler is, but also yeah. give it a bit of personality. And I, I actually love that. I yeah, love that piece. I think it's, yes, yeah, the. It's the jewel in the crown. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, these are the things that we get to do in house. Um, yeah, that customers. Well, you're just adding to a little bit to, you know, it's been changed up enough over the years. It has, yeah. You're just adding, just adding to it. Just adding to it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've and you've got an aluminium bonnet? Aluminium bonnet. It had a fiberglass bonnet, so we've made an aluminium bonnet for it. The grill's awesome. been remade. So, yeah, a few, oh, actually a lot of accent pieces yeah. that we've made for this and car. And is this going to be a road car? Or? It is, yep. Right, fully so registered. Road. Yep, fully registered wow. road car. Wow. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It's been so much fun to do something because I, I didn't, didn't know anything about them. I'd right. never heard of them before. Cool. Yeah. And so to have the privilege of working on one, when there was only seven yeah, in total, true. and it's got some, you know, some Melbourne history about it yeah. as well. Yeah, is fantastic. Any, uh, the guys that made it, are they still? A, uh, I, I really don't know. No, 50s, I really, right? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have thought so, but I really don't know. Yeah. But yeah, you'll you get talking to someone who knows one and they'll say, oh, there's one, there's a hotel somewhere in Victoria where yeah. it's sitting in the front window and you see a couple at Phillip Island and, you, and they pop up here and there and people have stories about seeing them or owning them or driving them or something, something I never knew existed. But yeah, yeah a lot of fun and a really beautiful shape too. Absolutely. Lovely little nimble cool. sports car.